Well, I grew up three blocks from the Metropolitan Museum of Art on 82nd between Park and Lex. And in the old days, it was free. And on a rainy day, my mother would say to my brother and me, oh, go to the museum and play. And so I grew up in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And we, you know, we spent a lot of time with the armor and with the Egyptians. But then I got into the Renaissance triptychs of the crucifixes and the and the you know the digging of Christ out of the tomb of the of the blue Christs and the weeping Madonnas and Mary Magdalene's I went through a, a long period of of just going mad for those and you know I was probably 10 years old and I just would spend a lot of time standing in front of them um, and I guess in terms of my plays that I feel the artist is the ultimate hero, you know, who are you going to write about, who, who, who one could admire, who sacrifices everything for what they believe in. And, I, and I've, you know, all my plays are about the artist in one way or another. And um, when I f saw my first Joseph Cornell shadow box, I had thought I'd been struck by lightning. And then I've had a, a, a very intense Joseph Cornell period, and whenever, you know, he'd have a show, and I, unfortunately, I, you know, he died before I could ever lay eyes on him. Although I have a friend who visited him in Utopia Parkway, and who was, you know, who really knew him quite well. But um, but I loved his shadow boxes. I think because they were sort of like miniature stage sets, and I particularly liked the empty ones. I liked the the, the ones that the sort of um, the abstract ones where life has been emptied from them and you hear the dying footfalls. But I became this huge Cornell fan and then I became a huge Louise Bourgeois fan. Um, I love her work, her installations, her, her cells in Brooklyn.